Leo, welcome to your tarot reading for the week from October 9th to the 16th. It's Raina here. Yes, it is the 10th, but somebody was kind enough to point out that I had done two Aries readings and zero Leo readings. So I'm, I want to just keep the dates all the same. I was tempted to start with the 10th, but I just want to keep it all uniform. But uh, thank you to that person because I... <laughs> I didn't, um, I thought I did an extra reading, but I didn't think I forgot Leo. And I was thinking, how come nobody's noticing that I'm doing, that I did two Leo, uh, Aries readings? So, whatever. I mean, that, that's not the first time that's happened, where I've done two, two readings for one sign in a month. But, um, the other thing I wanted to say is I'm using my original... Rider weight deck, the 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 deck that is the standard go-to deck when you're reading the tarot with illustrations by Pamela Coleman Smith. I really like to stress that because she is such a big part of what makes this deck so magical in terms of why people go back to it time and time again and what what why it's the standard that we measure everything by. And um, there's always like a little booklet when you get a Rider Waite deck. I think all tarot decks come with booklets. But it goes into like how they specified to her what they wanted. But, you know, she's the artist. So she ultimately came up with the drawings. And they're so evocative. They really talk about what the pictures were supposed to mean. There's not like that kind of cryptic meaning in a lot of the cards that sometimes you get with the other decks. The other thing I wanted to say is that I'm doing pairs. So I'm doing two past, present, and future. And I did this to try to keep the reading condensed, but it didn't it didn't really work out that way. So we'll see if I can do it with this reading. The reason to keep it condensed is it's just supposed to be like a a little weak update. Okay. Plus it's fun um, to do this kind of thing as even an exercise. When you're learning the tarot, there are free courses online and they'll they'll have you pick pairs and try to make connections with the cards. And so when you can do that, then you really are making connections in general. That's what that's what readings are all about, making connections between different areas of the person's life as well as with the cards themselves. Okay. So for the past position, <laughs> when I was picking this, I was like, wow, this is kind of a weird connection. Oh, and by the way, if I replace the cards differently, it doesn't matter because they were both in the same, for the same category. Um, the Five of Wands is a card of conflict, a card of competition. So for instance, in the workplace, this is that doggy -eat dog atmosphere where people are constantly you know, climbing, all, stepping all over somebody else to try to get ahead. And there's just a lot of unpleasant rivalries. Some people feed off of this. Let's see, Leo, maybe. I mean, maybe some Leo people. I, I think more like Aries people are naturally competitive and like, well, maybe Leo too. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. Actually, one of the definitions of the five of wands is a friendly competition but to me I see it as unpleasant because the number five indicates um, chaos in the sense that that you know the number four is is order and number five is uh, ruled by mercury so there's this sense of like things changing things always and and with the wands it, it can be your alliances changing your um, there's always a new battle to fight and along with that we have the high priestess 
So this is a card of inner knowing and gut, gut instincts and maybe secrets that are to be revealed. So with those two cards together, um, if this is, for instance, in the workplace, it could be that people are fighting and sometimes maybe none of them are aware that they're on the chopping block and, and or maybe they, they know it. Maybe they know that the management is going to lure the boom and they want to be the ones left standing. So they're doing everything they can, not just to do a good job, but to try to keep somebody else down. That's when you're, that's when it's toxic. If you're just doing the best job you can, that's, that's fine. That's good. But you know, when you're trying to keep somebody else down because you want to be the top dog, that's when there's a problem. In personal relationships, somebody may notice, gosh, we're fighting all the time. And they know that there's something else going on. Um, the other person may even instigate it. I, you, you ever notice that when people seem like they start to pick at everything you say and it's like they're trying to make you the bad guy and that usually means that they're doing something and they might feel guilty so they want to goad you into uh, saying something doing something so then they can say oh I'm leaving you know you're such a, a jerk and you may know this you may know that they are doing something now that was the past position. These are the cards that can tell you whether or not this reading resonates. The five of, these are, the, when I picked these, I was like, wow, you know, they really go together. Five of cups, mourning a loss, ten of swords stabbed in the back. You know, very self-explanatory given these uh, cards. Now Leo, Leo has been on a roll because of all of these um, events in August. But one of the things with Leo is that you had a lunar eclipse in your seventh house in Aquarius. So that might have been shining a light on something that somebody betrayed you, a romantic partner, especially a committed relationship, betrayed you. And you may be in that process of mourning that loss. And the same thing, even for, for job situations, especially where there's like one-on-one, -on -one, you know, clients, because the seventh house can be like you working with people one-on-one. -on -one. That's possible too. Maybe you felt betrayed by clients and be, uh, maybe you had clients that went to somebody else and they, you found out about it at some point in August even. And you, you felt like, um, or, or a person, a, a not a co-worker, but a, what do they call it when you have a, um, a partner in a business, I guess. That's what they call it. And that person perhaps betrayed you in some way. The, I think for those of us who are fire signs, and I'm a Sagittarius, of course Aries is the other fire sign, um, I think we all feel especially let down when people disappoint us because fire signs are very idealistic so you may have felt like this you you believed in this person and they did not live up to that maybe you were very loyal to them and you were very generous to them and they did not return the favor the outcome is represented by the seven of pentacles and the Two of Cups. I would say um, this says to me that they may, you may get um, this person back in your life or some sort of, whoever this is, if this is, maybe it's even like a friendship. Maybe it's even a friendship. Um, but this, it sounds to me like this person's coming back in your life. This is a card of patience and waiting to see if something pans out. So maybe somebody's trying to make amends and it's a matter of you just waiting and seeing like what's that what's that saying? Actions speak louder than words. So perhaps somebody who 
did something against you is trying to make amends and you're waiting to see if you can trust them again. But it sounds like you will eventually get back together with that person. The Two of Cups is a card of reuniting with a, a person and feeling that sense of um, commitment or unity. So, but it, it's like it takes time for, for that to manifest. So anyway, that was an interesting reading, you know. It wasn't like, it's, I, I kind of like these little readings because they're little snapshots and maybe it resonates, maybe it doesn't, but um, it's fun to do anyway. I hope you like this, Leo. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome week. Bye.